the Concrete Moth Scrap War with Brenda. I'm Brenda and today we're getting another uh, installment of our nosegay sew along. Now we've got all of the, the outer bits onto the crown, we've got the crown onto the cones and we're doing them four at a time so they're coming together very quickly. Now if you decided to use the 9 and the 12 all you needed was 9 blocks. And if you went the five or the six, you need 36. And eight, uh, we kind of left that one up to you as to how many you wanted because that was the beginner version. But before we get into the chatting here about what we're going to talk about today, I want to talk to you about Nana's journey. Now, Deanna has her uh, face uh, a, a YouTube channel and she looks like her stuff is a lot of fun. So when you go check her out, the, show, the link for her channel is going to be in the show notes below, along with all the patterns again. And go tell her Brenda from Concrete Mouth Scramble who sent you there. I think she'd, she'd love a little shout out and help her channel move along. Now, we're not doing any sewing today. All I'm doing is talking because I'm doing the five inch scale because this is a legacy quilt for me. This is, I'm replicating something my grandmother had done. So I've only got six blocks completed when we're filming this right now. So I will show pictures of my progress as I go on the Facebook group. That's another thing you guys should check out if you're part of Facebook. The Facebook group is free to, to go into and you know, you fill out a little questionnaire about, you know, following group lines and all this stuff. But what we do there is we vote on so dates which is also going to be part of this ongoing like monthly sew date that we do. And they also are using the rooms feature within the Facebook group. So only members only are in that group. And when you go into the room, there's people from all over. I met some lovely ladies from Sweden. I met uh, some lovely ladies from Australia. I'm Canadian. I've meet, met a few ladies from uh, like, America and South America, one lady from Chile, it was just lovely. And it was lovely to sit and chat with these ladies. We have so much in common. So that's part of the Facebook group. Now I will be posting, getting back to what we're talking about, I will be posting my progress as we go. But right now I only have six blocks out of 36. So yeah, it's a little slow going, but I'm hoping to move on a little bit quicker now. Um, uh, we're going to talk about sashings today. Sashing and cornerstone. Now, there's some arguments about sashing and cornerstones, and some people, they only like the look of they just put block beside block and there's no sashing. And that's, in all fairness, yes, if that's what you want to do, this is your, your quilt, you do what you want to do, but I'm just going to give you some options. Now, a plain sashing right with a cornerstone just a cornerstone no little fancy little star or friendship star around it is <clears throat> it's much easier to assemble like if you put like it doesn't matter which one uh, size you work let's say you, you have jelly roll strips of you know two inch or two and a half inch strips of of you know light low volume or whatever background color you were looking at looking at mine is going to be all scrappy so it's going to be all over the place right so I have <coughs> some colors that I've used in my blocks and some of them are more colorful than others and I'm going to just put them in as like as uh, sashing. It'll look fine when I'm done. <coughs> the cornerstone, if it's color a colored cornerstone, it gives you just another little secondary pop of color, right? That's all. It, all you're doing is putting little pops of color in when you use cornerstone. Now, if you chose to use a low volume cornerstone, then your nosegay would be the only color pop on the quilt. And some people love that look. That's fine too. Now, what I did with this is I decided, because I love the Friendship Star. I think it's the cutest star of all. I think it's possibly the cutest quilt block of all, but that's me. I put in Friendship Stars and I did them very simply by adding flip and stitch or snowballing the corner of the sashing. So what I've got here is I would take a piece of my two and a half inch sashing. Just let me, here, let me get the box open. This box just drives me crazy every once in a while. This doesn't open well. Okay, so what I would do, here's all my two and a half inch strips. 
Now I could have a lot of fun with this, but what I did was I took the sashing strip for whatever length I was supposed to be, I made it that length, and I put the stitch and flip, and I did them all the same direction, right? So I just went across, like you sew across the thing, and then you flip it up, and you end up with this. Now these flip and stitch corners are really cool. It's, it's like snowballing your sashing. And if you do them all the same way, you end up with a cornerstone with a little like friendship star all of a sudden popping out of your little quilt, which is kind of a cute little thing to do if you want that kind of look. I adore the friendship star. That's like, I, that was probably my very first quilt that I ever made was a friendship star quilt. But I mean, it, that was a long time ago. The other thing you can do, now, this is the idea I'm kicking around right now. Everybody knows what a sawtooth star looks like. It's basically, it's four um, flying geese, right, with the point, the, the, the nose of the goose pointing towards the center, right? So you'd have a center star and then you would have a little, you know, flying, goo flying goose on the edge. Now that's easily accomplished with a two and a half inch strip by sewing or snowballing both sides of your your strip with one and a half inch little squares and just doing a sew and flip or snowballing or whatever term they they're using this today and you would end up with a very cute little sawtooth star in the middle that's what i'm choosing to do that's me right that's me that's that's my that's where my jam is that's what makes me happy so <laughs> this is what i'm going to do now when you're doing that and you decide to put a little silhouette of a of a block right like because basically you only get the color of the block right so all it is is silhouette it's like a, a cheater block what happens is at the corners you need to put in an extra strip of sashing so you have the sashing that goes along the block right to give you your cornerstone that you have to put an extra strip of sashing in now to get your point or your last uh, half score triangle or flying goose for this this point this so that's kind of a thing before you put on your borders you have to put this on now with this one here I use a lot of yellow so the yellow's not showing up really well on the camera but on this one here if I decided to make it make it bigger again and by adding a full size you know six inch or five inch border th that would have all that would have done was make the quilt larger which would have been fine but you would have this in order to keep your silhouettes going you would have to add that extra piece of sashing at the end now the other thing you could do is eliminate the outside uh, friendship stars if that's where your heart is at let's say you want to do the friendship stars but you only want them to appear in the quilt like around the center block around the center blocks then these would not have have any kind of sashing or snowballing on the sides right because you would only have these ones then to worry about and you would have this would be blank this would just be a blank you know you put in a quarter stone just to line it up but you're not then looking at any other features on that that and that that would work too that would look really sharp because then you'd have just all the friendship starts now if you're doing a smaller block like i'm doing you know you kind of have to figure out okay which is the outside so i want to make those just plain sashings and then make the sashings that are falling in here in this area because this is your outside corner this part's your outside corner so this is your inside. So this is where you would start putting, thinking where you're going to put your silhouette. For me, I found it easier just to do all the sashing the same and then add my extra sashing. That's it. Now, there are, like I say, you don't need a sashing. You don't need cornerstones. You don't need anything, right? It's your quilt. You can do with this what you want. If all you've done is made one because you wanted to make a tea mat, you wanted to see how it went together. And just to see if you could do all those Y seams or anything like that. You can now finish it any way you want. I mean, with any using any color you want. Because, I mean, I always tell people, if you're not sure about a technique, at least do one. And that way you get some practice, you get some skill, you're not committing yourself to a full-size quilt. 
you're just committing yourself to one block. So <laughs> to round that all up, I'm going to be stitching on this for a while. I will be putting updates on the Facebook group and, you know, taking pictures as I go kind of thing. But this is where we're at now with the sashing. And it's been so much fun. The Facebook group is growing very quickly and we have some lovely, amazing, talented people in there that is just, it blows me away. And we're not getting them just to show my stuff. That's not what that group's about. My, gr my group is about, I want to see what they're doing. I want to I want to know what they're up to and I want to cuz I'm nosy. Let's <laughs> see what things inspire them. And this is the way we do this. So, I hope you have an awesome week. I can't hardly wait for our next virtual so our, our virtual so date in December. And this is by the time we're filming this, it'll probably be we'll be looking forward to the December so date. So, you guys take care. Have a lovely week ahead and bye. My husband and I would love to thank you for coming along with us on our little fun adventure here that we're having. We do have a Facebook group now and that Facebook group is got some very, very talented quilters in there and we love sharing and, and you know, posting pictures and commenting and it's, it's been a lot of fun. And the advantage of the Facebook group is sometimes I drop patterns in there early. So you kind of get a hint as to what is coming next. After the nosegay sew along, we're going to be doing curves boot camp right away. So we'll get to sewing those curves and it'll be fun. It'll be a lot of, it'll be a lot of interesting little blocks that we've got to work on. But we would like you to share, like, and subscribe. Telling your friends about us and, and letting them know that you kind of like our channel, that, that means so much to us here. So you take care. You have a fabulous week ahead. Okay, bye.